everybody. Come on in the room. Happy Wednesday. I'm Christine Horn, known as the Booking Magnet, the founder of Hollywood Bound Actors. This is the HBA Spotlight Series. For the past month and a half, almost two months, we've been doing some amazing interviews. And I'm so excited that Danielle Pinnock has uh, has been gracious enough to give some time tonight. So hi, Danielle. Hi. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to have you. And it's so cool because you've been, I had a uh, part of your other half of Lenisa Renee Frederick, ha other half of hashtag books <laughs> on like a month or so ago. And you were, you were all up in the comments and I was like, Oh, I gotta have Danielle. I gotta talk to Danielle. Um, <laughs> so, uh, hi, Marsha Estelle from Chicago. Hey, Marsha. Yes. So guys, as always, and if you're new to me, this is very off the cuff. I have a few questions on. I know I want to ask, but we're gonna all we always take questions at the end. I'm not being rude. I'm just on my phone in the Facebook group. So make sure you leave all your comments. Send your love. Hey Brett, Broadway in the house, Elgin Bell. Couldn't wait hey, for this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. So let's get first of all, hello. We are still here amongst COVID. Yeah. <laughs> we we're making it we're we not in the clear yet <laughs> we're not in the clear <laughs> man we are but we are here and when we were offline you know we were just talking briefly about just some of the the grace that has been given from this time even though it's really been tough on the world yeah. um and so I will talk about that because you've been through a lot just in these past couple of months. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but if you're not familiar with Danielle, you you will, I'm sure you've seen her face. She's been on Young Sheldon, This Is Us, Scandal. She was there messing with uh, Viola Davis's yes. hair, right? <laughs> Workaholics, the new show Dollface. She's an amazing voiceover actress as well. Right now in Thundercats, that takes me back. Thundercats is my childhood. <laughs> <laughs> it's so, so much fun. Animation is so much fun. I love it. Oh, I want to. I want to hear about. It. So, where where did you grow up? What was? Where are you from? And how did you even get started in performing? Yeah. So, um, I was born in Boston, Massachusetts. I don't think a lot of people know that, but I claim New Jersey because that's where I spent like my teenage years. And okay. that's, that's where you coming. That's where you came to be. Yeah, that was my coming of age. Okay. <laughs> was in New Jersey. Um, I have a huge Jamaican family. My mom has 12 brothers and sisters. So really? I have a ton of cousins uh, and would split my, a lot of my time between like Jersey and Brooklyn because a lot of my family lives in New York. So I had I had so much fun for growing up. I just had to say like I loved it. And to be in, to be honest, in terms of acting, it really was low key forced upon me. It wasn't anything that I wanted to seek out. Uh, my mom was like, you need an after school activity because she was a single mom. No. <laughs> she was like, have a blast, see right. what's six o'clock. Right. Here's your keys, um, last key, right? Go. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. So I think like the first play I was in was, I mean, just super, colorblind cast and it was Aladdin and the wonderful magical lamp and oh I was so irked to be in that sixth grade because I was <laughs> like I'm so I was like a scared kid I was just always I had these big bifocal glasses and I was such a bookworm and they were like no y'all got to do this or else you're not going to graduate and I was like oh so they cast me as the co-lead to Jafar and I played his sister and because my grandmother was so religious we had to get our own costumes. This is how bootleg the production was. So we went to par Party City and got one of them like horrendous <laughs> outfits. And my grandma was like, you not, no, no child in my house is gonna have their belly out. So I had like a full like <laughs> leotard underneath with black stockings. And mm. I literally looked like the ghost of Christmas. <laughs> like in all in like, and literally Cats the musical all black. <laughs> So I did this and my mom was like, wow, she could really sing. This is insane. I had no idea. And she was like, great. This is what we're going to be doing all through middle school, elementary school. This is now your thing. Like literally she was like, this is it. Um, but then I started to like it. Like I would be put in summer camps and stuff. And I was like, this is actually a really great outlet. And um, when I went to college, that's when I said, you know, this is going to be my major. I was double majoring in that in poli sci. And I got this amazing opportunity when I was 19 to, we did a school production that ended up going off Broadway. Um, oh. 
So they snatched us out of school for a year and we toured around the world. And I was like, this is, this is exactly what I want to do for the rest of the rest of my life. And that's how I'm here now. <laughs> I love it. And I love the Jamaican connection. My side of the family, we have Bermudian, we have Jamaican Clarendon and Kingston. Come on, Clarendon! Uh, Yes, yes, yes. I love Ooh, that. My mother would could pull out the photos now. The red dirt, us showering yep. in the street, goats in the streets. Oh my. I haven't I been back sure. to Clarendon though since I was a kid. So I, I'd be really curious to see it now. I know our family has has grown. I, I haven't been to, well, I actually, the last time I went to Jamaica was, I think it was last year. And we did a full... Um, we went to Kingston and we did Montego Bay and then we were up in the hills though for a bit because I have some cousins in the hills and I was like, all right. And it was like spending a night and <laughs> I was like, get ready. It's right. different. <laughs> it's different. <laughs> you gotta uh, open your mind, open your mind. I was like, <laughs> open your mind. I was like, it's different. So, and I haven't been in, you know, in the hills and in the country areas really since I was like 16. Yeah. So I was just like, all right. But it was so much fun and I loved it. I just yeah. I love Jamaica so much and I miss Char- that. Characters, characters. Shout out to Courtney Gift saying Westmoreland. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for popping on. Make sure you uh, say hi to Danielle. Um, she'll see your comments. I'm on my phone to see your comments because we're also we're on, actually on Zoom. I love that. So I imagine too, having so such a large family, there's so many characters. Oh, yeah within the family. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> do you well, ever have you, do you ever find yourself drawing from cousins oh, aunties? <laughs> every audition. <laughs> every, like I it just coming from uh you know this is what I always say to like any of my friends is like coming from like a big West Indian family like the storytelling is integral to not the community and like passing on stories, whether they be true or right. embellished. embellished. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm like, stories. I'm like, wait, I was there though, and I don't remember those parts. <laughs> but it's like innately, you become this incredible storyteller because of all these people. You know, the generations of you know the elders and your aunties and your cousins and just the laughter. And I think that has really helped me especially in terms of like being brave because there's nothing that a west indian is scared about um i just remember just being kind of flung into things <laughs> my entire life so when it came to working on stage i was like okay i can do this like my mom being like tell that joke make us laugh you know those kinds of things yeah. and you don't know that those are kind of some of the building blocks to help you in this life as a professional so it, i mean I have a whole one woman show literally that brought me to LA. That was the show that got me here about my upbringing and my coming right. of age. And that's for the body, that's body, the body courage. Body I, courage. Mm-hmm. I was looking through your EPK, your beautiful uh, press. She has a beautiful press kit, y'all. Get it together. Get it together, y'all. You <laughs> um, seriously, I mean, sidebar, like so many times as actors, and I'm always preaching this to my clients. This is still show business. So it's your responsibility yep, to real. gather. I don't care if it's two lines in the county newspaper, honey. They said, she was amazing. You better, she was amazing. Yeah. Clip that yep. out. Clip it out. <laughs> That's old school press kids. Clip it out. <laughs> That's, it, clip it out. <laughs> That's it though. That's it. But, you know, just really keeping, you know, because also we don't, you know, my coach tells me, you know, we can't build upon success we don't acknowledge. Yeah. So it's important also to see the journey because some yeah. we're so in it, even though we're, we could be enjoying the journey. And I love Karen Kendrick, who was on here a few weeks ago from who's one of the stars of Just Mercy with Jamie Foxx. She was saying, what if the journey is the destination? That part. And it was like, oh, yeah, I love that. That's so real. That's be- so so real. part of enjoying your process is looking back and being like, because we're always going to keep aspiring. Yeah, man, I've come a long way from that little Jamaican girl, you know, in Jersey and Boston, Massachusetts. Let me tell you, I just found my very first headshot and resume. Ooh, I have my mother send me mine recently. Maybe and we could do a my swap. My headshot was taken at the mall. <laughs> it was a full glamour shot with stars in the back. I had it off the shoulder and I was like, the hand was in it and I was in there like this. 
credits were all church plays. <laughs> At least you had credits. At least you had credits. <laughs> It was like saying in the choir, alto. <laughs> and I was just like, what a way we've come. Mm. And all of those things matter. They're building blocks. <laughs> yes. Because also they gave you, uh, even though we're, we're teasing, it's those steps that give you the, the courage and, yes. the, and the proof to yourself that I can do this. And I've been doing Absolutely. this. Absolutely. That's so real. You know, so yeah. <laughs> you know, for me, I remember second grade, I was in second and third grade. I was in storytelling contests at our elementary school. It was basically in hindsight, memorizing, I don't want to say monologue because it was a short story. Yeah. And my mother still has a certificate. It's Valerie Horn, by the way, if you don't know, guys, has everything. Yeah. <laughs> Every report card, everything. <laughs> I'm grateful for it. So just FYI. And there's something because I always came in second. I came in second both times. Mm. And I feel like to this day, like that meant, that was meant to keep me humble. Because had I come in first place, second and third grade, I feel like I would have been a different kind of person. <laughs> That's listen, humble. That was a lesson from back in the day. That's real though. That's real. I love it. I love childhood stories. I really do. I really live for them. <laughs> Oh my god! Say who find out who people were and what they've become now. I I love a good childhood story, truly. Yes. Let me check these comments because it's blowing up. Oh, um, <laughs> hashtag slightly embellished. That's talking to our our uh, our, <laughs> yes. our, our fan. That's it. That's the shirt. <laughs> <laughs> Possible truths. Yes. Hi, Lakeisha. Hi, Mr. Lima. Hi, Denise. Hey. Thank you guys for being here. And if you have comments for uh, Danielle. We're going to uh, get to those in a little bit, but and I'll remind you to put them in the chat box there. Those of you on Zoom uh, can also put them in the Q&A box. Let's talk about, um, we're going to get to current stuff, but I'm so interested in the things that mold us. Yeah. So you talked about the, the family, you talked about how you were thrown into things and survived and enjoyed it. Were there times, because especially in teenage years and you know, especially because you, you, you deal with such a body positivity and all this stuff. Where was that line between super confident in the craft, but then going through the tween teenage years yeah. where, where we're all just awkward? Yeah, that's the thing. I, I think I really commend the kids now because these kids are, they, they are dressed like 30, 40 year olds. And I'm like, <laughs> I was still in Oshkosh, but gosh. <laughs> Like, when I tell you I was the most awkward kid ever, and, like, when I had to get glasses, that's when things just kind of... <laughs> oh, <laughs> the Valerie, glasses, Horn. Valerie uh, Horn has those pictures, too. Those okay? glasses? I could see everything. I could see everything. Literally, 2020 vision, okay? <laughs> literally profit level vision okay <laughs> so it's like and also it's like I, I lived in like a household of like three generations of women my grandmother she ruled that household with an iron fist I mean mm -hmm. she was a four or five lion in a kitten heel mm -hmm. and um extremely religious and you know it was it was hard trying to be the token in these public, um, these private schools mm -hmm. and like coming home to then this overly religious household um, and trying to navigate and balance, you know, somewhat of a normal teenage life. I mean, my grandma really, she used to have me like in three piece suits. Like I looked like I could have been a member of the Kings of Comedy. Like I'm telling you, like she really, <laughs> she really had me looking like Condoleezza Rice and Steve Love, <laughs> Love Child. Like it was insanity. <laughs> but, and it was hard because I was chubbier and you know, it's something that um, I've been thinking about recently uh, cause I'm running a pilot based on body courage is what is it like to be the other in these predominantly white schools, you mm -hmm. know? And I think there are so many conversations around that, especially first com first generation conversations that I want to start having. Um, because I remember being in school and being like, wow, I'm really big. I can't fit into Juicy Couture and these like Abercrombie and Fitch. I'm going to Burlington Gold Factory. Yeah. And that kind of has something on your... Uh, self-worth and oh my gosh my hair looks different and that girl's hair flows and oh sh should I get the perm and you know right. all of these conversations that 
Um, I'd like to see reflected on TV from more quirky black girls. Like if we had an insecure yeah. for a 14 year old, <laughs> that's yes. what I'm looking for. <laughs> yes, because it's, it is those moments, you know, <laughs> where you, it's at the base of it, let's get real. It's, it's the need to be seen. We all, that's no it. matter what we are, who we are, how we, how we represent, we want to see ourselves and yeah. just to know that we're not alone. I think it's, it's that too. It's, it's the reason why we have this Hollywood Bound Actors community because yeah. we need community. It is like Absolutely. essential to us, yeah. you great. know, and it's, it's those moments, you know, <laughs> talk and think about your grandma because what's funny is <laughs> you're what we don't know as kids, what we don't fully get yeah. is that our family has most for the most part has good intentions. Yeah. Right. You're gonna show up looking presentable. You're right. <laughs> You're right. You're gonna show up. You know, I remember my mother, my mother's watching this, she will laugh. There is in New York, I grew up in the Bronx. Yeah. And it, there was a grocery store called Pioneer. Oh my gosh. Yes. And I'll never forget my mother was on some like I was the only child for a long time. So I was 15, yeah. 14, 15. And she was on some like you get, I never went without, let me be clear. But one day she decides to buy me a pair of sneakers. Yeah. Not the Jordans or whatever. The sneakers, Danielle, were called Pioneer. I know they were. So where, where do you I think? Know, I know it. All the students thought those sneakers came from. So I accidentally, I don't know what happened to the shoes. I wore them to school and they never returned. I don't know what happened. I'm pioneer. I'm <laughs> telling you, I had a bubble jacket when everybody was wearing those like bubble jackets. Mine was Southwest, like the airline. And I was like, mom, this is my <laughs> brand. <laughs> this is, and it was reversible. <laughs> I just. <laughs> oh, but it's I these moments. It. It's these moments and the fact that we can laugh. I mean, that's still, I think the joy just so yeah. because everybody's not that lucky. It's true. Oh my gosh. I, I want to know when, when do, <laughs> people are saying they're screaming, there's all kinds of tears <laughs> happening in these Facebook comments. Like, you can see later if you play this back. <laughs> when did you know, and y'all know it's good because I have these sweat rags. I need to get branded sweat rags. That's Please what I do. Really, that's what I really <laughs> I have to write my audition like, hi, my name is <laughs> Slate. Okay, give me one. <laughs> Did y'all see Hollywood back matches? <laughs> Lightly dabbing. I just got a brand new idea. Bam. Yes, please make it. <laughs> we need it. <laughs> we need it. When did you know that you could make people laugh? I love watching in interviews about with comedians because interestingly enough, for a lot of comedians, you know, especially stand-up, a lot of times there's a there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of times there's some darkness. Yeah. And the way to find relief is through the comedy. So was it during those times where your family was like, do yeah. this thing? And, and then you saw the reaction. What was that like? You know, I think the thing is, I grew up in a house where I always wanted to make uh, my mom happy. My mom was a single mom. And, my, you know, my dad, he was kind of around, but he was a Jamaican man. Like, <laughs> he just was... <laughs> around <laughs> you know what i mean he was probably driving a gypsy taxi yeah like he was very much like the santa claus would pop in and pop out <laughs> you know and it's no tea no shade it just was the right. fact of it. but it was so i grew up in like a very strong family of women and my mom worked so hard like i mean my hustle literally comes from her she yeah. when she was married she was a housewife she and then you know, things kind of fizzled out between them and she wanted a divorce. And she said, well, if anyone's going to do the divorce, I'm not paying anyone. So she went to law school. So wow. she could literally her. do her own divorce <laughs> and to pay for law school. She was running a travel agency in our attic. Yep. And like she was also a courier and like she had so many side hustles and even like opening her own practice. I was her, her receptionist and filing and all of those different things and I saw how tired she was and you know going to a private school was hard because these kids are so wealthy but she always made sure that she gave me her best do you right. know what I mean so and what a beautiful example I, anything I could do to make her laugh and like it 
I'd just be telling stories about stuff that happened at school and she would just be like, where are you getting this from? Like, <laughs> what's going on? And I, like, I just had, I grew up as an only child. I do have a sister, okay. but um, I just had this, always a vivid imagination. That's the thing. Like I used to hold full comedy shows with like the stuffed animals and like the Barbies and literal inanimate objects. I'm like now sounding back, I'm like, I should have been in an institution. No, we would have all been there because Lord knows. Literally, because I have to be like, are y'all having a good night? <laughs> literally, literally. Yeah. And my mom would come and sit and we have such a close bond. So I think a lot of my comedy does come from you know, there were dark times, but it is always to make my mom laugh. If my mom laughs, then I know I did my job. And that's still my meter now to this day. If she calls me and sees a hashtag book sketch and she's laughing, I'm like, did my job, I made my mom laugh. So that's really where a lot of my comedy oh my comes from. I love that, that moment you just said, and I think I said it on a recent, one of these interviews, uh, that's how I feel like I don't, really concerned I'm I'm always in such tunnel vision in yeah. my life and my work and I same like you my mother has been just a uh, my a rock and the epitome of strength yeah. and but when she did it today oh we not crying today okay she did it today <laughs> you got the towel come on but she texted me today and was just like I see how because I'm getting ready for the launch of my signature program book more tv and she's like I just see what you're doing. It looks great. I'm just so proud of you. It's like those, it don't need much. I don't need much in the world, yeah. you know? So I think that is so beautiful. And what a way to honor her and, and the success that you've had and that are, are having. Let's talk about your transition to LA. And, <laughs> oh, oh, uh-oh. Let me get the fan pointed right at This jumps off the gate. It's just, but first, before I get into that, I just want to say, what you've created with Hollywood Bound Actors, you are literally a mogul. And this is going to be more than Zoom once this quarantine is out. You are going to be on Netflix, you're going to be on Hulu, you're going to be on Variety Actors to Watch, Hollywood Bound Actors interviews. Like, I see all of that for you. And I'm so excited. I'm excited to be a part of this. And um, thank, thank you. you for having me. You're really, really special. And I'm, I'm excited for what the future holds. I'm really hyped. <laughs> I to, You're trying it. <laughs> I just to let you know, no, thank you. Know, sometimes you. people get interviewed and they don't really acknowledge the host. <laughs> you know, they want to kind of talk, which is cool. But like, I just want to acknowledge you and just let you know, like, this is really dope. And the conversation series have been so needed during this time of quarantine and civic unrest. So thank you. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate Very good. I love the feedback. I love it. Yes, yes. I see y'all's comments. We comment. Get your questions together. So we're going to talk about this transition. You know, I, as someone who who moved to LA the first time in 2011, thought I was ready. She was not ready. She wasn't ready. Okay. <laughs> so we came back right. So yeah. how was that transition for you, and how did it happen, and what was? I, saw, I mean, I, from your reading your bio, like it was like a whirlwind a few years in, but what was the <laughs> beginning like? Um, well, I'd been doing theater for over a decade and that I was extremely comfortable with doing theater. Um, the thing is my agent in Chicago at the time was like, we think you should start trying to audition for TV. And I'm like, I'm not having it. I'm not, I don't want to do TV. And I think part of it was my own insecurity of like, what would I look like on screen? And right. I'm big and oh my gosh, I don't know. I don't really know any like plus size women that look like me, you know, that are my, like, I just had so many hangups, societal yeah. hangups. Um, and my one agent was like, you know, let's try it. And if it's a complete disaster, we won't do it again. And you can just stay on stage <laughs> and be comfortable. So um, I had just finished uh, doing a fellowship at Second City. Oh, and okay. I was doing a ton of improv. So I said, you know, if I'm going to do this TV thing, I have to include improv in some of my takes. They were like, okay, sure, whatever you want to do, Danielle. So um, I did three auditions. The third audition was for HBO Whitney Cummings Project. And they kept calling me back. And I was like, okay, this is so weird. Um, and then on the third callback, they were like, we want her to screen test. Oh, so yeah. I was like, 
what is screen test? Like, this is when I'm telling you, like, I had no idea. And I'm like, yeah. in Chicago, I was like, what does that mean? Are they going to like Skype us in? Like, they were like, no, you're flying to Los Angeles. Uh, oh. And I was like, I don't have any money to fly to LA. I can't go. <laughs> they were like, no, they're going to fly you and they're going to pick you up. And I was like, in a car? And they were like, yeah. <laughs> Cause you know, I'm coming from theater. I'm getting paid $45 a week. <laughs> I'm getting paid in pizza. Like I just was like, oh, okay. You're paid in applause. <laughs> and bow. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you everyone. See you at the store, literally. And I'll tell you, I, to, still to this day, that memory of this black car coming up in my hood in Chicago and him being like, Danielle, like not even want to come out. Right. And I was like, hi. So I got to LA. Um, and it's so funny because there was a there's an actress, her name is Amber Chardé. She was just coming out of NYU and we're really we're close now, which is so great. But we were at the test together and uh we got to work with Whitney Cummings for the weekend and oh, awesome. tested, which was amazing. Um I didn't get the job, but I I didn't even know much about TV that I wasn't even it didn't affect what? you. You were right. It was, I like, was like, okay, full, full track. Thanks for the ride. No, literally, I was like, be blessed. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and um, the the young woman that ended up got, getting it was a she was a YouTuber, and she's so funny. And it was just great to just be in that environment of being in the HBO studios and like meeting all these casting people. And when I came back to my hotel that night, the casting director called me and he said, like, "Hey." I just want to let you know, you were my number one choice for this show. And I fought really hard for you in the room today. And I don't think um, this is the last we're going to see of you. And I really think you should move to LA. And I was like, on what? how am I going to move to LA? So I went back to Chicago. My agents were like, that was amazing. We think you should audition for more TV. And I said, okay, sure. Um, and I talked to them. I said, listen, I've been doing this theater thing for so long. Do you think I should move to Los Angeles? They were like, we do. So I saw, and I said, well, I don't have any work out there. And let me try to start with theater. So right. I went on playbill.com. I saw that the Geffen was casting uh, Barbecue by Robert O'Hara and Coleman Domingo was directing it. Ooh, so Coleman. I flew back to LA for the night just to audition for the project. And I lied. That's because that's what we do. We will go. I literally lied. And I was like, I live here. I live in LA. And they were like, oh my gosh, that's amazing. I was like, yeah. They're like, where do you live? I was like, Sherman Nice. <laughs> and they all laughed, but I really thought that was the name right. of the town. And I did my audition and they had already kind of pre-casted, but Coleman called and said, hey, do you want to um, come here and understudy? And I was like, absolutely. So I was like, at least I know that for eight weeks- You have something. I have a gig. Yeah. So that whole summer, like literally in three months, I was coaching, I was driving Lyft, I was- I was working at the warehouse for Girl Scouts packing cookies that whole summer, like trying to get money to move out here. And that was the job that allowed me to get This Is Us. Um, I I mean, that job, I mean, that job was insane. Like it just working at the Geffen and working with all of those black celebrities. And some of these people are still my friends, like Kimberly Hebert, she's my mentor and Coleman and to be in that environment as an understudy, because I know a lot of people, they try to play understudies. So like, oh, oh, no, no, no. I'm not on stage. I'm like, that is a learning opportunity to just, Absolutely. it gave me that space to learn what this business actually was and what needs to go into it, especially as a Black artist. Can we talk so, about, though, operating on faith? Yup. <laughs> Facts. Belief in self. Yeah. And maybe without you whether you were fully aware of it or not, you were really in this, you were really in an abundant mindset. I, I'm a deep law of attraction person and yeah. just faith and being like, it's going to get worked out. If if the desire is in your heart, if the, there is a, there's the solution already exists. Yeah. And the, yeah. you stepping out and saying you lived in Sherman, nice, you know, <laughs> but and showing up, doing your best, you know, and being willing. Yeah. Okay. Actors, willingness Mm -hmm. it's one thing to want what someone else has want a career that someone else has but are you willing to do what it will take and i say this all the time you can't just look at someone's life and want one piece if you take it you got to take it all that's real that's real that's real 
<laughs> so, and then, I mean, gosh, and I love it. And it's, it's a trickle effect to then future gigs. And yeah. then, you know, we see, clearly you stayed. I did. <laughs> you didn't leave. I was like, I gotta make this work. <laughs> I gotta make this work. I'm so glad. And I'm telling you like the auditions, like each audition that I had in my first year, it was just so random and so, you know, orchestrated by God and the universe and there were so many things I went in for that were just untitled and just even being able to play in the room because I didn't even know so much about the industry. I just knew how to act. And yeah. I was like, I know I can't be going in there doing my full theater like projection, but yeah. I was like, I just make it a little bit smaller. I was like, if I know how to do one thing, I know how to act, I've been acting for so long. Yeah. And I was like, and I can improvise. So a lot of these comedy auditions, when some folks would be afraid to you know, do that, I would just come in there and just make stuff up, like my final buttons, and they would just laugh and they would be like, Who is this girl? And I, you know, I would come in and talk, ask them about themselves. How y'all doing? Is they were like, Oh, you see, you, actually you see know what I mean? As a human being? <laughs> like, I'm like, Everything okay? And they're like, Yeah. And I'm like, I saw some lunch coming in. That looked good. Where's that from? You know, so just. <laughs> Being a regular person, I think as actors, you know, sometimes we operate as machines where we're mm -hmm. like, we just got to get in and we're freaking out in the waiting room. And I'm like, these are regular, these are regular, regular people too. Yeah. And we're, you know? cause it, it's, it's worthiness issues and it's the way the industry likes to present itself. Yeah. Um, I want to speak since that you talked about improvising. Uh, shout out to Marilee, uh, who's one of our OG HBA members. She asked, "What makes a good imp improviser? How does an actor how does an actor exercise and build that skill outside of classes?" Listen, honestly, I would say you, right now in the quarantine, you can be practicing uh, scenes like TV scenes with friends. And one of the things I've been doing with a lot of my friends that want to get more into improv is I'll be like, when you can make me laugh, I was like, that's when we know. And I was like, just practice, keep practicing, keep going. So I usually improv in the button. I let, I do whatever for, they for wrote. For brand new, it's quickly explained the button. Oh, yeah. I've never taken an improv class. Yeah, 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 absolutely. So um, you'll have the scene that's as written and the kind of very final beat of the scene where there may not be any verbal anything. You can improv a line or something that is nonverbal something to kind of secure the end of the scene. And that's like the pocket of where I improvise and because it's unexpected. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they'll flip the camera off. And they're like, oh, wait, that was funny. Wait, can we do this again with the, you know? So what I've been doing with a lot of my friends is I've just been Skyping, going over scenes with them. And I'm like, be free in that space. Whatever comes to mind, try it. You know enough about this character. They've given you a breakdown. Where is she coming from in her day? Um, I was like, if she, does she have her purse on? Do you know what I mean? Those kinds of things. Um, and they, they usually go well, you know, yeah. but it does take practice for you to feel confident enough to do that. Cause sometimes if you don't want to give a half improv or you're like, yeah, you gotta commit. it's about commitment. You really have to commit. It's about commitment. <laughs> Cause then it's just going to be awkward in the room. It's like, okay, thanks Crickets. for coming. <laughs> Crickets. <laughs> okay. We talked we talked a little bit about that last week with Susan almost, almost as we wrapped up and we were talking about how she said it so beautifully how casting okay they give you two pages and they it's they have a dream they want you to make it come to life and yeah. she talked about a bad audition she had where you know the casting director said well thank you for coming in memorized oh Ooh. ah See, I've been lying. She, well. is that thing of you only gave us what we gave you and so I love what you're talking about is, is, is making it your own Have in the button. You guys can be, it can be a look. It, can it be literally something. could be a look. It doesn't have to be verbal. So that's what's so fun. <laughs> Let's talk about how you, I know many people watching who will watch this on the replay or hear it on the podcast have gotten to know you and your other half, Lenisa Renee <laughs> Frederick of hashtag booked. <laughs> I remember I was, I know you were there watching when we interviewed her when we mean it was me uh not other That's it, the brand. No, here it's in this brand. office this office is chocolate superstar production so i walk yes. I go, all right y'all good morning that's it that's right <laughs> you know my staff is not all here they're in different places <laughs> um but we talked about in the beginning just you know i remember telling her like just you're gonna have to she she said the LA is like the Olympics of acting, and I was like, yeah. yes. And you have to find a way to make your own space, carve it for yourself. Yeah. So 
how did the decision, and I know you guys have been interviewed a million times, but I'm always interested in the resistance that comes up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because of course we know, yeah, I'll just make my own content, duh, everybody's doing it. Yeah. But then there's the, what do I do? How will it be received? Will it yeah. be funny? Will anybody care? How did you two work through that and finally get to the point of upload? You know, this is the thing. Um, Lanisa and I work really, 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 really well together. Now, I've known her for nearly a decade. We were understudies together in Chicago. And when she came to LA, I was like, finally, I have my community. I have my best friend here. And it was just, it just was such a breath of fresh air for me. And, you know, this hashtag book really started pretty organically in 2018. We were sitting on, um, right here <laughs> at this table. And uh, we were just talking about just random things that happened in auditions. Um, and she was saying, she just went to a commercial audition. And I was like, why does everybody in commercial auditions always feel the need to wear cardigans? Like, what is the thing with that? Like, why do actors always wear cardigans? And she's like, that's so funny. And she was like, we should film something one day about that. That's hilarious. And I was like, let's do it right now. And she was like, dang out. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the person I am in hashtag book. I I'm love like, let's it. do it right now. <laughs> You're my kind of sister. That, that's definitely and She's me. like, okay, let's talk about it. And the thing is, in our odd couple, you need both sides, you know? It yeah, can't be okay. all impulse, impulse. You need someone that's going to be like, all right, sis, but let's plan some stuff. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So we did it, and it took us a couple weeks before we uploaded it. And um, I think I we edited it together. Um, and I said, well, you know, what do we call it? And she was like, I, we were, she was like I'm so annoyed when, like, I'm not booked and people are booked and they're saying they're hashtag booked. And I was like, that's it. And she was like, what are we going to just do a hashtag in a book? I was like, no, we're going to spell the shit out. <laughs> so she was like, okay. And I was like, let me get on Instagram. So I just made the Instagram, the Twitter, and then we uploaded it and we started the slowly, the grassroots following started to grow. Yeah. And I wouldn't, the thing is, we just did this as an outlet for ourselves as black dresses in this industry you know the foolishness and the the stunts and shows oh. <laughs> that happened for us Absolutely. what those audition waiting room experiences are what those microaggressions that we face in terms with casting and yeah. directors and on set you know so we wanted to poke fun at the industry in that way and showcase the joys and misfortunes of what it's like to be an actor of color a black actress in the entertainment industry and i'm so proud to have the following and yes. how you guys reached a, a a new like record you were just in featured in forbes <laughs> forbes <laughs> it's insane one of many i mean I, it's i'm so i mean and you have such an awesome following and it doesn't shock me. I mean, it's just because I think there's a beauty when we just speak to the truth. There's a thing about just being authentically you, no matter what line of work that you're in. You know, if ever when it comes to a point where you're, tr when you have to try, I think that's why yeah, I even love coaching the way that I do. Yeah. Because I'm like, look, this is me. My hair gonna change. I don't, <laughs> like, if you don't like wigs, I'm sorry, because this is Christine <laughs> and whoever's for me is, can be, is gonna be for me. Yeah, and that's cool. I, when you're sitting in an authentic place, that's, you see the result that you guys are getting. So I'm not shocked and it's hilarious. Oh my God, thank you for watching. I appreciate it for real. I, I wanna take some questions. Yeah. Um, put your questions in the, in the chat because um, I just wanna make sure if you guys have anything on your mind, you can let me know. Um, so I love that. We talked about that. There was another question I wanted to ask you. Um, for the, and I asked Edward Moere this when he was on. Yes, Eddie. Uh, for the actor or producer, writer, whoever's watching you at home right now, Elgin says, is Danielle offering classes? She does have a website and she does offer coaching. <laughs> she does. <laughs> um, I already told her I'm getting my session. Oh my God. For, um, <laughs> so we can bring this show to Netflix, okay? <laughs> um, but for the, for the creative at home, who's, you know, there's a great book by... Um, Stephen Pressfield called The War of Art. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and about just that resistance and what advice, one, one piece of advice, you expressed how you and uh, Lanisa came together, but what's that middle ground between having the idea, maybe, because there's that thing of, does it have to be funny to be online? Yeah. Does it, what, I'm a dramatic person. Everybody just wants comedy. Like what advice do you have just to help someone get started? 
Absolutely. Um, the first thing I would do is brainstorm first. What, first of all, what is the idea and different ways of how you want to execute it? And if you don't have the idea fleshed out, what is your passion? What are things that excite you? Um, and put yourself on the timer. Because the thing is, I know for me personally, if I take too long to think about something, it may not get done. It may just not. So if an idea pops in my head, I'm like, okay, let me put 10 minutes on, on my timer and let me just flesh it out. Mm. But then once you've do, done it for 10 minutes, you'll want to do it for another 10. Ooh. You know? So Kena, that's Kena, Kena Ferguson, this sounds like some of your advice. Shout out to Kena Ferguson <laughs> in the building. It's I like beautiful. that. And because that feels doable. Yeah. If, what are, if you don't know what the idea is, what is your passion? And then once you go into your passions for 10 minutes, then take a minute and be like, what excites me the most out of all of these passions that I've worked on for 10 minutes? Pluck that out, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, and then figure out what kind of content do you want to create? Who are you following on social media? Do you like to interview people? Do you want to host? Do you want to do funny videos? Um, there are so many outlets. There, I mean, like so many- what you're saying, and if I'm hearing you correctly, and it's what Gary Vaynerchuk likes to say, it's, it's all content. Yeah. So your idea of content may look different from someone else's. It's so true. And don't try to, and this is my thing, like, don't try to be someone else. Do you know what I mean? Like, your individual self is enough. Like, when I teach actors, social media for actors, for sag after and things like that, I always tell them, like, you have, there's something in here that is so bomb, and you just got to put it out. There's this one young lady that I still to this day remembered and she says she she loves funny videos but like the thing that is her most passion is um serving the homeless community she's like that is the thing that is my greatest passion it has nothing to do with acting i said great okay so we know that that's one passion Mm -hmm. and i was like what about the homeless community and she's like well the thing is like food she's like i grew up you know not you know not really having enough food in my household and Sometimes I just feel like I just want to, you know, give over my lunch or figure out what they want to eat and talk about their lives and learning more and maybe setting up a donation site for them. I said, that's the show. (laughs) That's the social media brand. I said, lunch bag. You can literally call it lunch bag LA, lunch bag New York, lunch bag Chicago. And it'd be an interview series with different members of the homeless community. You share a bag lunch with them and get to learn more about them and set up a donation site for them. I was like, that is a documentary in itself. And I was like, and you can start that on social media for free 99. That's the, that's the thing, the real estate. And I'm always talking to, (laughs) and keep your questions coming because we're going to write, we ain't doing like we did with Susan last week. (laughs) Danielle has an appointment. Okay. So we're wrapping (laughs) very (laughs) fast. I'm like, because I don't even intend. I'd be like, we'll talk 20 minutes. I stopped even saying that. <laughs> like, it gets so juicy. And, you know, often what I know this community is yearning for people to be real and honest and yeah. raw. Um, you know, so just bear with us. I see your questions. Um, oh, I lost the thing I was going to say, so I'm going to take the question. Okay, thank um, you. Jasmine <laughs> you said... Real estate, but I don't remember. Oh, thank you. The importance of, and, I'm, and again, sometimes I'm like a broken record to my clients. I'm like, seriously, this is, before, when you leave that audition room, they check in your Instagram. Hell, before they even let you get an audition invitation, they're checking your Instagram or they're checking your Twitter. And what do you represent online? It is free real estate. Yeah, it is. For you, yeah. that is like your network. If that's, you know, Oprah Winfrey has own, you have your Instagram page. Absolutely. You're in charge of programming. What comes on your channel? Yeah, that's totally real. And honestly, I have to just be 100%. More people have known me in the industry from Hashtag Booked than the actual television shows I'm on. I will never forget, I was literally on the little uh, trolley going to set for Sheldon. And somebody jumped out in front of the trolley. They were like, oh my God. And it was Simone Missick. Oh, and I was like, <laughs> Hi, <Simone. laughs> I was like, oh my God, it's a mess. <laughs> and then the PA was like, what's going on here? <laughs> and she's like, I love hashtag books. And then there was a tour that was happening. And someone's like, that's the dope hashtag book. And my PA was like, what is that? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So it's like they're conversation starters in the room and put these things on your resume. 
That's on you. Oh, yeah. yeah. I didn't even think about that. Are you kidding? Put it on your resume. Mine is under like new media. Literally. Hashtag book series record. <laughs> 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 you. Production company Instagram. Okay. <laughs> It is on the I resume. I am done. Yeah. You could be putting post in. You know what I mean? Interview Hollywood Bound actors and just list the guests. Are you kidding? We'll talk about this in our one-on-one. So let's not take the time up. This is... You see the love. <laughs> hey, man. Hey. <laughs> I'm done. I am done. I am done with you. But gems. This is how we do it in Hollywood about actors. Okay. Oh my gosh. Oh, you're just making my heart smile. I just love your energy. Huh. Let me take a breath. Jasmine asks. <laughs> hey, Jasmine. How does Danielle describe herself in terms of how she sees herself as an actor improver? How does she brand herself? Okay. Um, honestly, I would say that I, I just say multifaceted artist, <laughs> because the thing is, is I'm not just an actor. I'm also a writer, you know? Right. Uh, and I may, and I'm also a comedian. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm an improviser and I love sketch. So I just say that I'm an actor multifaceted artists and I include all of those things. There was something that Amanda Seals was uh, talking about recently and she was like, cause she has a long list of <laughs> things that she does. Mm -hmm. uh, but she said, I always leave with comedian first. And for me, I always leave with actor first because my roots are in the theater. Um, writing mm -hmm. came next and then, you know, comedy came after that. So I will always leave with actor, but if anybody wants a script, <laughs> thank you, they can call me as well, yeah. Yeah, please follow her. I have I have Danielle's, she can follow her at Body Courage, and of course, also follow her, yes, and, right, improv, right? Yes. Also follow her at hashtag booked, and if you're interested in any of her services, and I'm serious, I'm not joking, um, I'm getting on her calendar. I'm not, what you all need to know is, I'm not above coaching. I will. I invest in coaching all the time. I have a business coach. I have a personal trainer. You got to get with people who are doing what it is that you want to do, and they're being successful at it, and who inspire you. Not just because people say, "Oh, they're they're the best," or they're the most expensive, or they're the cheapest. No, who inspires you? Who do you connect to genuinely? That's why I'm always like, "There's tons of coaches out here who teach exactly what I teach. You can't teach it like Christine Horn." Back. But they can teach it for if it resonates with you, go with them because yeah. we all need a different voice at a different stage and time of our lives, too. Yeah. So you can find out more about that with her. Tracy Farrar says, uh, one of my hey, one of my Bookmore TV uh alumni, she says, Danielle, I just wrote a solo show. Yeah. Is your solo show anywhere to be viewed or read? <laughs> that is so crazy that you just she just asked that because. I just put it in my stories for 24 hours to be able to be viewed. You did? Literally like half hour before I came on the show. Oh, so we all have to watch it. How can we make it like, this, how do the algorithms treat it nice? Yeah, so Is there something we can, we can do? Get on, um, get on Instagram, follow me at Body Courage. And if you go into my stories, and if those that don't know how to use the stories, just click my face. <laughs> just kind of click through, and you'll see the picture of me as all the characters, and it gives you the instructions on how to watch the show. And it'll be available for 24 hours. Oh, okay. I know what you're It's 90 right. minutes, y'all. So know that <laughs> it's a play. Right. <laughs> it's a play. We're not going to be Netflixing half it's hour. It's 50 seconds. Oh. So the password is on there. It's on Vimeo. Um, yeah, and watch it. Oh. a bunch of stuff on there. So, yeah, have fun. <laughs> yes. Okay, well, I know what I get to do during my business time. I have, like, TV. I said business time. Y'all hear me? Dinner time. Dinner business? Jesus. <laughs> yeah. When it gets dark. Yes, yes. Uh, oh, that's so great. Thank you for asking that question, Tracy. Um, Karen, Karen, I think that's a good question that I think you should reach out to Danielle afterwards. She asked about how to develop an idea, but I think that's a longer than we have time for today. So reach out to her on Instagram. Um, yes, yes, yes. 
<laughs> Tabitha McNeil said, can we get a class for social media? Uh, you can go to her website and every now and then, sometimes you've done stuff with SAG-AFTRA. Yep. I think the best thing to do is connect. <laughs> I'm your representative. The best thing to do <laughs> to get in touch with Danielle. Uh, really connect with her that way you can get to her website and she has all her offerings listed yeah. um, so yes Brett says uh, what's the key to staying consistent in creating your content like do you guys batch content and then schedule it like I know there's so many ways people work when we first started it was wild because we were like filming every every day. Um, and then as our schedules got busy in terms of like working on set and, you know, Lanisa was busy and she's voiceover queen, like it was no joke. So we schedule side a day and we film for about four to six hours. And then we divvy up who will edit what information. Um, the great thing is in the quarantine, we've been able to like have a master, we're at now at the point of having a master calendar, which yeah. is nice. Um, and we work every other week. So, and if there are weeks that she's booked and doing something, I'll take a couple of weeks and the same for me, she'll take a couple of weeks as well too. And it's just been really helpful in terms of like staying organized and all of that stuff. So I would say if you have, if you're feeling it one day, just do all of them. <laughs> just yeah. do them And while you have the energy. Yeah. And because also as actors, we just don't, know, we know we chilling. I had audition in three weeks. And next thing yeah. you know, you got three auditions. They're all 10 pages. Oh, now you're yeah. on a Oh, wait, you booked it. Wait, you, now you're on set for 14 hours. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. Well, I'm telling you, like, we're still pulling from stuff from that we did in January. Like, that's how much content we have preserved. I <laughs> so love it. Feel that energy, film it. Um, great. Uh, Elgin, I love your question. And we're going to end with that one. Um, yes. Because I naturally end with that one, too. So wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So... Closing instructions for everybody watching. And thank you guys who are on Zoom. Um, we're going to go to Body Courage today so we can catch the um, the Body Courage show, limited yes. time. I think we should also share it. I think we should also share it to our stories. Yeah, share um, So that people, we can get more traction on it. You know, algorithm. Yes. Yeah, I was always messing How can we mess Stamp it around? Up? It's around for 24 hours. And I literally was like, I did it. I finished um, the pilot and the treatment for today. So I was like, let me just put it up just as a reminder for myself of like why I'm writing this show and why yeah. it's important to me. And a lot of people in LA, I wanted to do it in LA. And I just, I haven't had the time. So when Corona is over <laughs> and it's yeah. safe, maybe I'll do it after. But um, I just wanted to just put it up there as a thank you for all those people that supported me for five years when I was doing it and for new folks wanting to watch. And isn't that just the power of, I was joking with my husband recently about just the power of the internet. I was like, when we were kids, I, I, we had a little argument. He was, I was like, we didn't have internet. He was like, well, internet existed. It was just <laughs> dial up. I was like, I didn't have no computer at home. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Cause I had a typewriter. <laughs> yeah, my mother had an IBM big. No, that's it. Happy, right. So I just think about the access and I, you know, I think it's time for excuses to go away. I think yeah. it's time for us, no matter what it is, and you talked about it so eloquently about content looking different, but really like, let's let this be the last month or the last year that you watch someone else do the thing that is in your heart. Let's talk about that, because that's real. That's real. Those ideas that you have and you're like, wow, it's already a TV show, that's crazy. Or it's a book. <laughs> oh, someone did the play and it will happen. It will happen because there are so many millions of people on earth and we're all kind of thinking the same thing. <laughs> so connected in more ways than we're, we we're so we're so connected. We're so connected. And just do it. If you if you have 10 minutes today, put it on the paper. That's my challenge <laughs> for y'all. Put the timer on, put your phone on airplane mode, and just sit out for 10 minutes and just think about the idea, brainstorm it. That's it. The last thing before we leave, if you can leave us with you know we've decided every guest I have I ask what they want the theme to be called because I know we're going to talk about everything under the sun but we we settled on we decided on uh the necessity of comedy so as we wrap tonight can you just talk to how in this time pandemic uh racism death I mean just murder I mean just a lot on our, on, and for us as artists, being so open and so empathetic and so sensitive to the feelings of the world, 
close us out with why you think comedy is is so necessary. Comedy is necessary because for me, I would say, I feel like a lot of comedy, comedy comes from dark times. It comes from, comedy and drama are really very similar. It's just a beat change difference. That's what it, you know what I mean? It's like, are we taking the pencil pause or are we not? You know what I mean? That's really the difference right there. And, like, I feel like, especially for right now, artists, I mean, just people in general that are outside of the arts, we need to find ways that bring us joy. Um, I don't want us to be consumed by the internet either right now because it will affect all of our mental health. It's just the facts. Um, And if there are times when you can just plug out, do you know what I mean? And just find things that make you laugh that are, whether it's, you know, going outside, whether it's doing a dance party and looking crazy in mm-hmm. your bedroom, whether it's watching something funny, we do need those moments to decompress because the effects of what's happening right now, we are in unprecedented times. Yes. And I, I don't think a lot of us are taking those times out for to find moments of joy. And whether it's like we feel guilty or whatever the, dis- the, whatever the case may be, you'd, everyone deserves joy. Yeah, especially black people right now. Black people deserve joy right yeah. now. So I encourage all of the black artists that are watching to take a beat, whether it's an hour, to do something that serves you in yeah. some way, so that you can fight the full, good fight from a full cup. Yes, I couldn't. I I mean, absolutely. I'm just in a hundred percent agreement with you. So I mean, it's so necessary. Yeah, take the breaks. Care for yourself, and I'm. I think I've said this every week. This it's an act of self care. Yeah, protect your heart, protect your mind. Talk to someone if you need to talk to someone. Get counseling. I stay. You know, y'all know I talk to Laura, my therapist, every Monday at eleven. Okay, Friday at nine. Okay, Rhonda. <laughs> Help me, Rhonda. Yes, okay. literally. Literally. Uh, Danielle, thank you so much for being here, for sharing space and time. I know you got to go. I'm going to DM you. So um, okay. I need to give you my cell phone number. We need to exchange phone numbers. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm ready. I'm ready. But seriously, thank you. I just, you, you're, there's so much joy here. If you get time later, when you're taking a break, come back to this replay. You'll see all the love that you can't see here. There was so much I couldn't get to every question, every comment. Right. But continue success. Um, we love you here at Hollywood Bond Actors and we look forward to seeing everything that you have in store. Thank you so much. It was so great being here and chat with you soon. Yes, thank you all for watching. Good night. <laughs> hey you, are you an actor? Not booking. Well, guess what? The problem isn't you. It's not that you're not talented, hardworking, or deserving. It's that you haven't found the missing link that can change your career forever. Playing Small, The Actor's Guide to Becoming a Booking Magnet. It's my new book! You can order it now at whyplaysmall.com.